The Lord is with you. He's always been with you. He's with you right now, and he will forever be with you. I'm thankful uh, that we're in this series on Joseph because we're able to see Joseph's life and the way that God worked through it. And we see that it's, it's, it's linear, it's progressing. And uh, last week, we, uh, Pastor Kurt talked about how his brothers, how it, Joseph was the most loved child of, of Jacob, from Jacob. He was the offspring of Rachel. So it was the, Rachel was the one that Joseph loved most, the wife that Joseph loved, I mean that uh, Jacob loved most. And you can only imagine how much jealousy that that can, can have in family dynamics. That Joseph was the one that, that was loved most by his, fa- by his father. And all the brothers were, looked at him with jealousy and with hate. So much so that when Jacob called Joseph to go out to the field to his brothers, his brothers planned out and schemed how they could kill him. And so we see that it's, it's, it's a pretty bad uh, family relations if you, you're wanting to kill your brother. But Reuben, one of the brothers, said, you know, maybe, just maybe, we, we don't have to kill him, but we could sell him. And so they, they ended up selling Joseph to a, uh, some Ishmael, Ishmaelites that were coming by. And as they, they picked up Joseph and sold him into slavery... The Ishmaelites took him to Egypt, and when he arrived in Egypt, Potiphar, it was an Egyptian captain of the guard, a powerful man, chose Joseph. He he bought Joseph to to be a servant, a slave of his household. And so now that Joseph is a slave of Potiphar, we resume this story in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. So if you're Following along, feel, feel free to, to stand for the reading of Scripture. Verse 2 says, The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a sec- successful man. And he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. And he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge. And because of him, he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, behold, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her, to lie beside her or to be with her. But one day, when he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house were there in the, was there in the house, she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out of the house. And as soon as she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled out of the house, she called to the men of her household and said to them, See, he has brought among us a Hebrew to laugh at us. He came in to to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And as soon as he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled and got out of the house." Then she laid up his garment, her, his garment by her until his master came home. And she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you have brought us came in to me to laugh at me. But as soon as I lifted up my voice and cried, he left his garment beside me and fled out of the house. 
As soon as his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, this is the way your servant treated me. His anger was kindled, and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Lord, I just pray that you would uh, bless this message, allow us to uh, truly receive it and truly receive the truth um, that you are always with us. Thank you for this day, and I just pray peace over everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So the story starts by saying, in, in verse 2, it says, God is with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. And it's just a good reminder to know right now that God is with you and I. But because we want to see that this text is saying because the Lord was with him, favor was brought to Joseph. And when Potiphar saw that Joseph was, being, was successful because of the Lord, he said, well, go ahead and take charge of more things so you can be more successful. This is my stuff, so feel free to make more success. And so he saw that it was not only success that, that, that the Lord was bringing Joseph, but, but that Joseph was actually, could, he was accountable, and that the, Lord, that the Potiphar could trust him because Joseph was being accountable to, even as a slave to all that he had. He knew that the Lord was with him, and so he knew that he, did, he wasn't necessarily working just for his master, but he was working for God. And so he was in charge of everything. It says, it goes so far to say that everything he had that he was in charge of, uh, that Potiphar didn't even need to think of anything but the next meal he was going to have. So that's, that's everything. So he's, ex he's successful. He's accountable. And it also says that he was handsome. He was handsome, and his, and his wife, his master's wife, saw that he was successful, accountable, and handsome. And he saw he also had his, his master put him in charge of even, even the other servants in the household, the Egyptian servants that, who, who had already been there. So I'm sure that there was potentially maybe a little bit of jealousy in, there, in that way as well. But the, the wife saw Joseph and saw that he was good looking and, and she acted on it and she said, lie with me, sleep with me. And that's when the trouble begins. But Joseph's response is why we're here and talking about this passage. He says, how can I do this against my master? How can I, he's given me everything. Why would I go and, and do that against him and against you and, and your marriage? But then he goes, he goes on to say, but how can I sin against God? That, that's actually the first and foremost thing in Joseph's reasoning, that he says, how can I do this? Such great wicked sin before God. God has only blessed me. He has only given me favor. Why would I do this sin against God? And so I just, I want to hone in on that, on that right there, because I'm not sure I fully live with that sort of an awareness that Joseph had, that, that God sees everything, that it's not just that he was with him and that he saw him, but that there was nothing outside of God's view in Joseph. And Joseph knew that all he had to do was trust that the Lord was with him. And I just... I challenge us to, to, to just be reminded that the Lord is with us and every sin that we, we, we commit, it's against God first and foremost, that he sees everything. Adam in the garden, when, they, when, when, when the, the fall of man in the garden, even there, God saw Adam. And what did he do when he was guilty? He just hid. He went to hide and he covered himself. And if we could just have a quick side note, that because of Jesus and his death on the cross, that we have nothing to be afraid of. There is no sin too big or too, too crazy or outlandish that the cross has not already paid for. 
that Jesus has not already overcome. And so just like Joseph, knowing that God is with him and that how could he do such a thing against a God who has been so faithful and favor, um, given him so much favor to him, that we can know that no matter what, what we do, no matter how far we go, that there's no sin too far from, from God's love in Christ. But, but as, as we resume the story, Joseph resists by saying, how could I do this to my master and how could I sin against God? But day after day, his, that the wife just continues to come to Joseph and tempt him and continue to say, lie with me, lie with me. And I just, this is speculation, but I just wonder, what did Joseph think? Did he, did he, did it slowly creep in? Did that temptation of her constantly asking and pursuing him, did it creep into him? Did it, did it creep in to say, maybe, you know, maybe I can. No one else will know. Or maybe he was annoyed every time that she asked and she just, he just got angry, like, get, get away, stop, stop asking me. Or maybe he brought it to the Lord and just processed it over and over again. Maybe he knew his weakness. We don't, we don't know, but it's something to think about because the temptation was there. And one day, she went and grabbed his clothing. And the reason I, I bring up how he might have been processing it, because the one day that she grabs his clothing, the first thing he does is run. As soon as she, she grabbed him, he was gone. He, he, he ran off. And at that point, Potiphar's wife knew she was guilty and that Joseph had the truth. She, Joseph had the true story. So Potiphar's wife needs to, has a couple options. She can confess and tell the truth to her husband, which I doubt, I doubt she would do in, in, given the fact that she has pursued him so long and lusted after him for so long. So she needs to either confess and tell the truth or lie. And that's what she does. She needs to invalidate Joseph's story. After all, he's, he's a Hebrew. He's not an Egyptian. He's not one of us. So I need to invalidate his story, and I need to craft a lie that is believable and is against him so that I'm not held to my actions. Now, this is sort of the contrast between Joseph's temptation and Potiphar's wife's temptation is that Joseph, in the temptation, he overcomes, he resists every time. But Potiphar's wife, from the moment that he, she saw him and lusted after him, she's been asking, sleep with me, lie with me. But then she goes so far to grab his clothing, grab his garment, and she acts on every single one of the temptations. So she, she has the clothing, Joseph's gone, and she knows now that she's guilty, so what is she going to do? She's, she tells all the household, the, the other servants, the Egyptian servants, the other men that Joseph had just quickly ranked above, and she tells them, look what, look what he has done. He's come in to sleep with me, to make fun of all of us. And she, she puts a collective guilt on all of us, that it's not just me that he did it to, but it, it's all of us. And it, and it gets everyone to get angry at Joseph. And so she, she has to craft this sort of story, but she has to also keep it consistent so that she can have the other men maybe tell her, her husband and have her husband, the story that she tells her husband needs to align with, with what she told the other men so that the, the whole lie can come and, uh, and be exactly what she wants it to be and manipulate the whole situation. And so when she tells her husband, she says... He came in and slept, he came and slept with me, and basically he, he came in to rape me, and as soon as I, I yelled, they, he fled, but he did it to laugh at me. And she uses this, the, the love and care that her husband must have for her, because he gets angry that, that she, she, of her story of saying that the, Joseph would do this to mock her. To, to laugh at her, and, it's, and, it, and he's, she's playing his emotions 
and her love, his love for her against Joseph. And so he reacts, his, the, the master reacts and sends him to prison. But Joseph is, Joseph's story doesn't end in prison. The story doesn't end there. It started with God being with Joseph, and it ends. The passage shows, it bookends itself, that it ends with the Lord being with Joseph. It shows that no matter how much time was in that that temptation, that period where he was overseeing everything, that God was with him. And through all of this, even from being wanting, uh, you know, wanting to be, ki- his brothers wanting to kill him, to being sold into slavery, to even maybe a high point that he could have had. He was still a slave, but he was in charge of so many things. To then being a- falsely accused of rape, to then being put in prison. Those are situations that were outside of Joseph's control. But God was with him. And so just like Joseph, we may be in situations that we did not ask for, nor do we like. I mean, take, take right now, we're in, in this COVID sort of season, this time. We didn't ask for this. None of us would have wanted this. All of the deaths, all of the pain, all of the, the suffering that, that people are going through, that we have to go through, it's all, it's all hurtful. And Joseph, he knew that God was with him, even in the bad, that it wasn't God bringing the bad but God was using the bad. And so like Joseph, we can be in these situations that we, we don't like and didn't ask for, but we can know that God is with us. We can either, we're faced, when we face temptation, we can either give in. We can give in to that. That's, you know, when, when Joseph, the wife came to him, uh, maybe the third, fourth, fifth time, we don't know. He could have given in and said, okay, I'll sleep with you. No one else would probably know except the Lord. The Lord sees everything. There's nothing that we can do that can separate us from the Lord's sight on us. That the Lord is with us. So we can give into it. We can give into the temptation. We might be able to give up. We can give up the temptation. Just, I'm done. I'm done trying. I'm trying to, you know, I'm done trying to to keep working and keep going. But Joseph kept working. Even when he was tempted, he kept being a faithful steward of his master's household. And the last, we can, we can overcome when we, when we have temptation, that we can open to the Lord's help. Martin Luther, one of the great reformers, always said, fly to the cross. That every time we are tempted, we can fly to the cross. Because God is with us, We can fly to the cross where it's all been paid for. And just like Joseph, as soon as he was he was touched and it got to that level of temptation that he maybe just couldn't handle anymore, he ran. And in the same way, we can run to the cross. We can run to Jesus every time. The truth that we have this day and every day is that we are overcomers. In Christ, because God is with us, not just with Joseph, but he is actually with us. God, Emmanuel, Jesus, Emmanuel. First Corinthians tells us, God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So every big and little pain, every hurt, every part of suffering that we go through. If you've lived one day in this world, we, we all know that suffering comes. Joseph knew this. Joseph was in the worst of situations. But God was with him, and God is with us, and we have that hope that he has not left us, and he will never forsake us. We might be facing loss, loss of a loved one, illness, Physical, mental, relationship hurts, financial trouble. We can, we can be facing abuse, trauma, neglect. There's so many things that, that we suffer through in this world. 
So what do we do, though? We can come to Jesus. We can acknowledge that, God, you are with me. And if you are with me, then who shall be against me? I just want to encourage us all today that we can share our sufferings. We can share the hard parts of of your story, of my story, not just to Jesus, but that's the first, first place Joseph went and the first place we, he's always with us so we can go. But we can, we can have friends in Christ that we, we share our stories to, our hurts. Pastor Kurt is available to share. Spiritual directors, someone you trust, anyone and everyone that you feel you can share your story with, it's a good thing to be known. It's a good thing to know that someone else is, is with you in that hurt. That it's, life is messy and there's so many burdens that we, that we go through, but, but Jesus calls us to bear each other's burdens, to, to live together, to care for one another as we're going through the thick of things. You might be anxious to share. It might be something that you're, you might be scared of betrayal or you may have been betrayed by sharing too much. But the Lord is with you. There's nothing that you have to be afraid of. I pray that we can be a community, a church, a family that, that can really lean in to the bad parts of our lives and share those things with one another. To not be scared and to realize that when you share, you might just be surprised of how, of how honored that other person might feel when you share something so deep and hurtful with them. That we've all fallen short of the glory of God and that we've all sinned and that there is nothing that we have to do to try and fake it before one another. But we can simply be as real as life is because God is, sees everything. He sees exactly where we are. So we can share our sufferings. We can also be available. Joseph shows us that because God was with him, he was able to just listen and be there for his master. And, and we can listen and accept those who may come and share their stories with us. And part of this is that realizing we don't have to say anything profound. We can simply just be with another. That there's power in that. That God is with you. And being with another person too, we can feel that tangible presence of the Lord. And number three, we can keep going because God is with us. That, that Joseph kept going. He kept, no matter where he took him, he, whether it was almost being killed to being sold into slavery to being put in the prison, that he could keep going because God was with him. That the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. That God is showing us love today. He's working out your life and making it your life, he's working all the bad things for your good and for his glory. And if we, if we just realize that Joseph didn't ever try and avenge himself to his brothers or to his accuser, but he knew that God was with him and so God saw everything. He didn't need to, to pretend like God didn't see. And in the same way, we don't have to avenge ourselves, but we can trust that God sees everything and he's working it for our good. And that's not to say that God's not a God of justice. That's exactly what it is saying, is that God sees it and he hears our cries and he wants you to know that he is a God of justice, sovereign over our lives, in control, that there's nothing that Joseph did, even in the, the, the depths of his pain and sorrow and suffering, that God wasn't with him in. So we can let go of bitterness, of jealousy, of anger, anything that Joseph might have been facing, we see that because the Lord was with him, he was able to keep going. Lord, I just pray that we can keep going. I pray that we can just be a church that trusts in you, knowing that you are with us so fully that there's nothing to be scared about. That if you are with us, who can be against us? That we can come today 
on the street corner of Westminster Boulevard and shout your name because you are with us and we can worship your glorious name, your glorious might. And we have that faith to know that there's nothing that we can do to separate us from your love, that your cross has paid it all. Help us to live out in freedom. I just pray that we would be encouraged today to know that we don't have to hide. We don't have to cover. But we can trust that whatever situation we're in, just like Joseph, that we can know that you are with us, that you are for us, and that you love us so deeply. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.